All right, man. Go ahead and kick this one off today. Tim Robinson, how the hell are you, man? Doing real good, my man. Good to, good to be back. Good to be back talking to you again, my man. Yeah, it has been a minute. This is uh this would this would have been our like we normally do these not too long after the the college football national title. This would have been our third one. So, you know, I, I know this year's been a little bit different when it's come to sports. So we're still gonna do it and we're gonna get back to it next year again. Um but yeah, I'm I'm glad we got I'm glad we're able to still do this, still set this up. For sure, my man. Couple couple hurdles going on, man. Nothing, nothing. Little virus here and there. Nothing major. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, one of the first hurdles that I wanted to um, touch base on real quick is something we were just talking about. You tore your freaking peck off, man. Do you hear me? Yeah, my man. So uh, some kind of crap kind of starts to fall apart a little bit, but uh, doing this workouts, basketball games, stuff like that. But uh, yeah, tore my peck out doing a uh, work. CrossFit, man. First actual like major injury I've had in CrossFit in God like nine years almost. So I mean, I I consider myself fortunate, you know. But it happened. I was going through the recovery process. Yeah, how's the recovery process been for you? Uh, it's actually been good, my man. Uh, went to the doctor. I got an appointment actually this upcoming Tuesday. Um, said I'm about two months ahead of pace, so didn't have to do physical therapy. That's healed up pretty good scars really minimal just starting to get back and you know like working with bands doing a little bit of my own therapy light lifts shoulder lifts things of that nature banded work just to kind of start to build up some of the mobility really strength back in gotcha man Shit's brutal, though, man. Yeah, it's a bad injury. It, uh, <laughs> it sounds a lot worse than it actually is until you actually go to pick something up, and then you're like, oh, yeah, no, that's not happening. Like, uh, that's what I was thinking. Like, how does that translate like, when you're walking around, when you're, when, yeah, when you're going to pick something up, like, everyday life, how does that fuck with everyday life? So, I mean, if you think about it, um, I work for FedEx office, so – everyday life i mean i'm picking packages up picking boxes up helping people as far as like typing anything like under pretty much your peck you're yeah. fine but like say my bought in uh the one time it was like a five pound box I had to lift it up with my left arm because i went to pick it up with my right arm and i could just hold it at my side that was it i'm talking about anything that's lifting up this way it was just and it wasn't that like i couldn't physically grab it it was just like you ever know, like, when somebody's, like, pushing on your hand, they're like, all right, hold your hand up. They're too yeah. strong. This is all we see, just everything falling down. That's, I mean, honestly, oh. what it was. Man. Like, that's just that's, got to the point now where I can do it. With them. You just saw it, what? Said just got to the point where I can actually do, like, one push-up, and it's not, like, killing me. So. Man. I'm happy. The are so the freaking frustrating, man. Yeah. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you, man. What's one of the worst you've had injury? Um, well, it's the I would say it's it's still like this ongoing shit that I've been dealing with with um nerve issues. Um and because it's been it's been something that I've uh that I've been working through like the past couple of years. And um yeah, it's oh wow. Yeah, it started in uh, around April of 2018 because that's that's around the time that I I lost I lost use of my left hand for a month. Wow. Yeah, um, it it was it felt all weird the the night before it happened, and like I was noticing like I was having trouble like like bringing my wrist back and like opening my hand like the night yeah. before I went to bed. I woke up the next day, and my shit was like stuck like this. Like I, I went to go try to like open. So when you're talking about picking stuff up, like, right, dude, the, the, the little shit that I had taken for granted, even just going to like open the door, like going to like use your hand to open the door. Like I, it would just right. the doorknob because it wouldn't open. And I was like breaking dishes and shit because I was going to try to like put them away and I couldn't open my hand to like let go of it sometimes. So sometimes it would just slide out and fall down. I'm like, oh my God, this is, 
You know what that reminds me of? You remember Scary Movie when the guy's like, my strong hand, everything he did, yes. like crashing down. My middle hand was not stronger during that time at all. <laughs> no, that, yeah. that shit was crazy, though. But yeah, I mean, I've uh, I, I just been, I've been moving incorrectly for a really long time. And that led to a lot of like really, really bad movement patterns so i've been uh trying to well i've been working towards recorrecting those at, in, in the past couple of years so i'm i'm basically relearning how to to move properly because i don't think i ever learned properly in the first place yes i completely agree with you one thing and i mean i'll say it and i encourage everybody to do it uh ramwad i encourage everybody put the little purchase, get the app, download it, do the shortened version, the extended version, do any version of it, man. Me and my, um, me and my significant other, my girl, we've been doing Ramwad mm-hmm. like almost every other day. And for me, it's helped tremendously because that's one thing I've always struggled with is just mobility. And when you're doing stuff, that's what adds up, especially the older you get. It's important just to stay limber, man. Like being able just to bend over and not, Pull something. <laughs> yeah, well, it's just like I've um like I'm too impatient with this shit sometimes, man, because I'm just like I just want to go play, I just want to go do the thing, I just want to go pick up the thing, I want to throw the ball, like let's go do something. Like right. warm up what? Like I don't want to warm up. <laughs> yeah, I honestly that's the way it was, man, with me, like the day I hurt myself. And I'll be the first to tell you, there was no like, all right, we have like a group warm up that we do. I think I like went to the bathroom or something and I came back and was like, all right, let's start working out. <laughs> yeah, we see what happens. <laughs> Use the warm up the wrong way. Warmed up the wrong way. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, shit. Well, speaking of injuries, let's get into the the national title game or the, the college football playoff. And, um, oh, man. My Buckeyes. It was a bad day for you guys, man. Huh? Oh, uh, Man, talk about a crazy ass game though. Like, it, you know, you know how like there's some teams out there when they face other teams, it seems like they have their number, and yeah. it just seems like Clemson is that for Ohio State. Um, I agree, and it's it's so crazy because I like watching that game. I feel like Justin Fields and J.K. at 100 percent. We take it. It, I feel like it would have been a much closer game. And I feel like Ohio State, if they got up, they might have been able to hold it. But as you know, with me being a diehard Alabama fan, Clemson, as much as people doubt them for their schedule, their conference, all the other stuff, it's a solid team top to bottom. And Trevor Lauren is a very solid QB top to bottom. I mean, he takes a beating. He makes the throws. He'll throw 10 picks in a game. I mean, it hasn't happened, but he throw 10 picks in a game and come out and still hit that receiver on an out route with a DB there. Like, it's not any business. Yeah. I mean, they made some crazy adjustments, and, and that's really all you can say, man. Look at that game. It's almost like you're in disbelief. Like, all right, Ohio State has it. And you're like, wait, wait. Wait, what happened? Like, oh, when Trevor Lawrence started up the middle, I knew that was a dagger for you. That you know, a- when he started the, the ground game, I was just like, motherfucker, like, uh, come on, like, here we go. Like, I don't know, man, um, you know, that's one of the unfortunate sides of being an Ohio sports fan. It's, uh, I, I know that lots of different unlikely comebacks can happen. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I was, uh. I was getting a whole lot, I mean, a whole lot of flack for being an Alabama fan. And Michigan was beating Alabama at the time. And Ohio State, like, after that whole, it was just, you weren't hearing the end of it. That's all you were hearing. Just like, oh, you're about to lose to Michigan. Oh, man, next time. <laughs> then when we came back to beat Michigan, all right, stuff's quiet. And then after that Ohio State game, it was just crickets. Man, just oh, yeah. absolute yeah. crickets, man. Yeah, I bet and it's, uh, so many people want to talk shit to you about anything when uh, when when Bama's not doing well. It uh, honestly, and that's what it turns into, man. And it turns into now. So the argument now is: hey, Did you guys play for a national championship? 
And I just sit there laughing. I'm like, you didn't play for one either. You didn't make it to the final game. Technically, we're in the same boat here. Like, yeah, we we, we got we got runner ups. That's what a lot of people got. Like, what did what did Ricky Bobby say? If you're in first, you're last. That's exactly what it is, man. I mean, it's, but if I you remember, him, his dad was drunk during that. Hell, you could be second, you could be third. Come on, man. Uh, no, but I definitely get that. Um, you know, I, I, I wonder, what do you think, uh, like, say Ohio State beats Clemson. Do you think they show, do you think they have a better showing against LSU, or do you think it's a shellacking? To be honest with you, I think the best game LSU played, and I know everybody's going to give it flat for whatever, was that Alabama game. And, I mean, yeah, Alabama was coming back the whole time. Final score, you look at it, 45-41. Two was hurt. Alabama had about nine or ten hurt people. Alabama still took an L. At the end of the day, L is an L. There's no way to look at it. L is an L. But don't think physicality-wise, nobody matched up with LSU. And LSU, one thing that we all do on video games everything, they finally brought out the five-wide package. They said, listen, most teams have – one really good DB, some K DBs, the most DBs you're going to see. And I, I give Ohio State props for it. Ohio State has usually about three solid DBs. Yep. Nobody has five good DBs. And let's just bottom line it. Nobody has five good DBs. No. And Clemson, no. I mean, not Clemson, LSU, spread it out and just pick you apart. Like, that's, I mean, that's what it was. If you look at that Clemson game, it went five wide, four wide, and we're just, picking Clemson apart and it was it was bad it was really bad you know what's what's crazy is I (laughs) I didn't start um out the the national title game like I I went into it um like I think I started watching it in like the second half because I went into it like I think LSU is gonna just fucking throttle Clemson I'm like I don't think this is gonna be a game and when I turned it on, I was just like, fuck, it's really not a game. Like, the, like LSU I, uh, was just having it. I called it with my friends. We, like, did, like, you know, everybody does, like, little side bets, little stuff like that. And I'm like, I honestly feel this may be a game through the first quarter. But realistically, after watching, and I feel like Ohio State, in my mind, this is the truth, Ohio State was the second best team in the country. Second best team. It went LSU. I would say Ohio State, Clemson, and then it honestly was just everybody else. Like, Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, just everybody else. And that includes Alabama. Could have threw them in a hat, pulled them out on a given day. But LSU is far, like, far none. They had all the pieces and weapons. And they had a system quarterback who – I'm not even going to say a system quarterback. They just had a guy who was determined. The girl was determined to – make noise and I honestly think if LSU would have went against Ohio State I think that would have been a, you would have had him more fired up than before I think Joe Burrow would have been out for blood <laughs> just <laughs> out for blood man I, he, I just, uh, like that when Justin Fields came to Ohio State it like Q I I had no clue um the potential of Joe Burrow to be honest like I liked him like I I was pulling for him like I think I think that's one of the things you saw is like a lot of Ohio State fans were pulling for Joe Burrow it's it's so fucking odd that you see a lot of Ohio State people pulling for a guy that's in you know it's SEC but it's just because he was the backup at Ohio State and I'm like I'll know. be the first to tell you that bothered me and that bothered me a lot because he wasn't good enough to start and everybody said the same thing when he went to LSU he isn't going to be anything at LSU, blah, 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 blah. And then he starts blowing up. And it's like – and it's crazy because, again, I live in Ohio. All the Buckeyes are like, oh, man, that's our guy. Joe Burrow's our guy. And it's like, all right, man, like, come on. Like, you, you can't lay any claim to this at all. Like, right. you have no intention on starting Joe Burrow. You guys didn't even know who Joe Burrow was. You just know he was an ex buck Like, he went to your school and left. That'd be like if Tate Martell had led Miami to, oh, Tate Martell's the next Buckeye and da da da. Like, come on, man. Like, because nobody's Alabama. hearing about Tate. Yeah, Alabama. Here's a prime example. We 
like Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts is a great player. We love Jalen Hurts. We wish Jalen Hurts the best. But nobody's out here, Jalen Hurts, that up. Like, he played <laughs> us. He actually won a national championship. He started games for Alabama. He left and went there. Jalen, we wish you the best. We hope you well. You're a man. Hey, great job, Jalen. But, I mean, listen, if it comes down to it, bro, you, you got to go. Like, it's not a, it's not a, hey, let's, let's, and that's what got me is you saw Jalen Hurts still sending tweets and messages about Alabama, like, hey, roll tie, smoking a cigar when they beat Tennessee. But you never saw Joe Burrows with anything Ohio State ever. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, he, he, he gives the nod to, like, he shouts out Ohio. Like I, I know, like he still does the whole thing, you know, because he has a lot of support from Ohio state, but mm -hmm. I, I definitely get what you're saying with that because say Joe Burrow goes to LSU and sucks it up. Like Ohio state fans are going to be like, oh, glad we didn't have that, you know, type yeah. thing. And, uh, hey. and yeah. nobody was riding Joe Burrow train when he started last year. I mean, that's what's his second year in the system. Nobody yeah. was riding the Joe Burrow train when he was at LSU getting beat. You know what I mean? Like, so it is what yeah. it is, man. I mean, I'm really it, looking forward to this year in college football. That even makes me like look at the look at Ohio State as the an entire team and being like, damn, they had Joe Burrow and Justin Fields, and Justin Fields, it like both those guys going into the seat, like go, going into the season. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know shit about Justin Fields. Like, I know that he's a transfer. I know that some shit happened in Georgia. And we have actually got to, to be the recipient of a freaking athlete who is legit, who can make the short throws, who can make the long throws, who's got the zip. Like, he's he just got – it seemed to me like he just got better as the season went on. And – um I'm very excited to to see what he can what he can do this year because he's like, oh man, it was so gut wrenching watching that last pass uh, because when it showed the angle behind him uh, when he was at, like in that game against Clemson, as soon as he let the ball go, you see his receiver like juke and then go the other way, and it's like at that split second. It's like the receiver thought he was going to throw it here. He thought the receiver was going there. And it was like, as soon as he let it go, you see him go like this. And it's like, no, why? I, yeah, that, 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 uh, that hurt. That hurt. I know it did. I know it did. I'm very interested to see what, what these teams do this year. You got Alabama kind of reloaded coming back. With yeah. About three people who should have went drafted came back. Ohio State loss, I mean, are you one of the top probably 10 defensive players in the last five years? Talking about Akuda or Chase Young? Chase Young. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, don't get it wrong. Jeff Akuda is severely underrated. Now, I will be the first to admit it. I, I underrated him as well. Okay. But Jeff Okuda, you could – you he'd be replaced. Replacing a defensive end – like Chase Young, you don't you don't replace that. Yo, he like a with Alabama week. That's what Alabama replacing Tua. That's with LSU replacing Joe Burrow. Yeah. That's like you don't just you can't. certain people, yeah. You can't replace, man. So it's it'll be interesting. Ohio State losing JK Dobbins, losing Okuda, losing yeah. Chase Young. So I mean it's it's a lot of holes and I feel at the end of the day, and I, I'll, I'll say it, I feel LSU has a leg up, or uh, Clemson has a leg up on uh, Trevor Lawrence is back, and because he's, just, I just, like, yeah, it's it. This is gonna be Clemson year, like the redemption year for Clemson. This is gonna be that redemption. Year. Ugh, ugh, makes me sick to my stomach. Ugh. That's. That's just the way that I feel, man. This is gonna be the the redemption year. And they're they're gonna tie Alabama for the most national championships in BCF era. Right now, they're gonna tie Alabama, and it's just gonna be it's gonna be an open it's gonna be an open show, man. Like this this has got a good year, and then I'm really excited about the NFL. So many movements going on there, dude. Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's get into some NFL stuff, man. I, um, yeah. What do you, what do you think about your boy too, going to Miami? I wish him, they gotta do a lot. <laughs> That's just, Miami's gotta do a lot, man. They're, they're, uh, they got a lot to go, man. They got they they got some pieces and some parts, but that's they got a lot of work to do, man. That's a yeah. lot of work to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm um, I'm I'm looking forward to the NFL this year. Like I, I think it's gonna it, they, there's some it's it's spread out. It seems like it's more spread out, especially with with Brady going to Tampa Bay, like that was odd as hell. And I feel that Tampa Bay is, I'm not going to say they're going to win the Super Bowl. So I'm not saying that. Okay. It's not the worst coming out. But to not say they are the favorite, Jameis Winston threw for 5,000 yards. Keep this in mind. Jameis Winston threw for 5,000 yards. You're giving Tom Brady the same wide receivers Plus, they got a good bar and a tackle, and they added Rob Gronkowski. In my head, I'm just like, how in the hell did Tampa Bay just pull this off? Yeah. Like, and Tom Brady's not going to throw 5,000 picks either. Yeah. He's not throwing 30 picks. Let's just, let's just bottom line it. Tom Brady's had what? Double digit picks, what, once in the last eight or nine years? <sighs> I don't even know. Oh, I think the most he's had in his career is 13 or 14 picks is the most Tom Brady's had in his career. So you're giving him Goodwin, Evans, Gronkowski, O.J. Howard. And God, who's the other wide receiver they got? Got another one as well, too. And then I can't remember the uh, the white dude that they got. I can't think of his name, but he runs like a 4-3-40. I'm just like, like high four, three, four. I'm just like, <laughs> like Tom Brady's just like, oh yeah, like this. This is the right time to leave the Patriots. This is the right move to make, dude. And that's that was that's something that makes me wonder about the Patriots too. Do you think they're going to be trash, or do you think it's it they really are that solid with the culture that they built there? I think the Patriots are a very system type team, and yeah. I think the Patriots will be fine. They might not go 12 and four, uh, 11 and six. They might not go that, but they're, they're going to be, I still guarantee they're going to be a 10 win. I would say a nine to 10 win team. And at that point, that, you're pretty much looking at a playoff. Yeah. The only people that are happy right now are the Buffalo Bills, the Miami Dolphins, and the Jets. <laughs> I'm bringing Those are the only people that are happy right now. <laughs> they're they're jumping. Okay. I could just see the moment it got released, they're checking their phones like, somebody just went to the Buffs? Oh, like they just start screaming. <laughs> All I can think about right now. <laughs> they're just bumping. Oh God, they're just going belligerent. They were probably start drinking. They're in quarantine, just getting hammered. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Man, without that threat in your division anymore. Come on. Huge, man. And then your Browns. Look at the Dude. Browns, man. Got a tackle. Yep. Then in the, the draft, they got another tackle. Yep. The, got the a, true got, a, got another tight end. They got um it looked like I looked through their draft after it happened, and this was like one of the first times that I wasn't either like really excited or really like what the fuck. Like mm-hmm. I was kind of just like, okay, I can see what you did, and I'm mm-hmm. like, that's good, I think, because. You know, traditionally, when I'm like, oh, yeah, I love the draft, it's just like, well, Browns are going to crown. And uh, <laughs> traditionally, when I've been like, well, that is shitty, they shouldn't have done that, it's been right. Um, but <laughs> this time, I'm like, you guys actually look like you're trying to find puzzle pieces yeah. to fit. 
like, yeah, like, like, like games here's a this year. fucking concept that we could try. I don't know. I mean, you got a healthy OBJ. You yeah. got a healthy Landry. Yeah. Nick Chubb's good. You got Kareem Hunt as well, too. You add Hooper. If Baker can just be half fucking accurate, the only thing that questions me is the defense. I, I don't know why they let Schubert go. I feel like they should have paid Schubert, but that's a neither here nor there. Yeah, but, I mean, they, they got they got greedy. They got that safety from LSU. Um, so they they're they're getting like teammate style um, stuff going on too, which seems pretty cool. Like it looks like they're actually trying to build some camaraderie. Um, it's like there's a concept. Like maybe maybe it's a team sport. Crazy, crazy, it's crazy. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> like maybe, but. Um, yeah, man. They, and plus, you know, if if Miles Garrett cannot hit people in the head with helmets this year, then uh, maybe we'll uh, because he's a nut. He's like another like Chase Young type freak. He's a fucking freak athlete, man. He is giant. And I mean, the amount of pressure that he put on the quarterback. Game. What's up? I said the amount of pressures that he put on the quarterback, dude. Crazy. It's insane how uh, like how much attention he garners, and it's like you could see at that point. Like I felt like that was a turning point of the season last year. You know that was it, it was like you had the game won. You finally beat the fucking Steelers. Like great. You know that that for me still was like my Super Bowl because I don't have much to cheer about when it comes to Cleveland football. <laughs> but. Um, and, you know, I was like, look, I was watching that game and I'm just like, it was the epitome of like a Browns moment. I'm like, you have momentum. Yeah. You have the game in the bag. And one of your best players decides to take himself off the team. That is a moment that I will look back on and you just got to question it, man. And that's the best way to say it. you got to question it. A, what was he thinking? But what all really got said? That's what I want to know. You, if you look at Miles Garrett's demeanor, Miles yeah. Garrett's character, yeah. he never has. Yes, he's been penalized for some late hits on QBs yeah. and through the football. I understand it. it. It is, but that's you just don't go from one to like that's just two extremes that like something in my mind again. You know what's got said? No. Will we ever know what got said? No. Steelers are going to stick up for their guy. Miles Garrett's going to say what he said. But realistically, those are the two people who heard it. Because yeah. those are only two people who were there. Yeah. I mean, it's well, something. Like, you don't just do that yeah. for shits and giggles. You know? Yeah, you. But I'm like, I'm like, oh, man. Like, to me, it would have made, like, if something shitty got said. You know, in a situation where you're losing the game, you know, your season's in the garbage. Like, it's it's kind of like one of those things where I could see, like, you know, a frustration move. But you, you're you winning the game, like, all this and that. So, I, I get what you say. It's like, what got said? And, like, why couldn't you wait until the back and just fuck them up in the back? Thank you. Thank you. Drive right down to Pittsburgh and go just, right over to his house. Get into the, you know, tunnel a little bit earlier when he comes around. Be like, hey, remember that thing you said? Mm hmm. Like, yeah. that's why in my mind, I'm just, I don't know, you got to leave it as a gray area. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's a gray area. You'll never know. Just yeah. hopefully, hopefully the Browns do something to put it together to get themselves going. Because right now they are fully loaded. The only move I would have liked them to see do is just cut Olivier Vernier, cut him and sign Jadavian Clowney. They were talking about it, but they didn't do it. Oh that would have been God. That I was Garrett on one side and Clowney oh. on the other side. Oh wow. Oh my God, <laughs> dude. That would have been sick. I thought the Browns were gonna pull the trigger and do it, but they they kept them. Yeah. They kept them. So you know, you know what really I, I I legit thought OBJ was out. Like I thought he was gonna be gone. I don't see it, man. Only reason is the connection with him and Jarvis Landry. That's Those the are only like, thing that's keeping. I I feel like that's the only thing that's keeping him there. But like I feel like 
a, a personality like his and a guy that gets so much freaking attention, it was too much for Cleveland. I agree with you. I agree that his personality was too big, but that's football, that not basketball, because obviously LeBron, you know, he like, yeah. but I just don't think the football team has had like somebody of his social status. I agree. And, and Landry, that's why I think like, they don't want to get rid of him because to have him on one side, have Landry on the other side, and have Nick Chubb and then put Kareem Hunt in the slot or whatever, however you man it, that is that's really dangerous. And if you let go of DJ, then all your attention goes to Landry, which throws the dynamic. Why I 100 percent get them keeping. I just don't know if and and I say this now, if Baker Mayfield is the guy. I'm starting to, I, I want to say it. I keep saying it. I don't think he is the guy to, to make this stuff happen, man. I just oh. I don't know, man. I don't. It is, um, see, to, uh, to me, again, it's like going into the season. I'm just like, to me, there are all the questions. You know, it's just like you, you once again have an amazing team. They have, they, they have not had lack of talent over the years. They've had lack of being able to find the people to put the talent together to get it to work. Like, they haven't had garbage players. They've had some pretty stacked teams, and their records have not shown it. And, um, you know, I just – I wonder about that because I'm like, all right, Baker got humbled in his second year. So, oh, if you got – if you got humbled and you learned from it, you can come back and be a motherfucker. You can just take out vengeance on all the doubters, on like all the bad games that you had, and you can just you can really be the man. Um, that's that's a big if. We got to wait to see what's what's going to happen. Like, are you cleaning up the amount of times you're patting the ball before you throw it? Like, are you going to pump fake 30 times before you actually get rid of it now? Like, yeah. are you seeing the field better? Like, if you do get time, are you going to hit the passes? Like, there's so many freaking questions right now that, um, you know, it, it, again, it's, one of, one of the Browns fans' favorite time of the year is before the season starts because then you don't have to see the reality of what's going on. I mean, you hit the head on the – I mean, you hit it right, man. That's that's what we're looking at. I, what I want to see Baker Mayfield start doing is run. When you get those five yards and slide, take off and run, man. Don't – don't when he made the comment about uh, – who was it that was taking off and running? Uh, they made the comment about um, Kyler Mur or uh, Kyler Murray running, scrambling, getting some yards or something like that. Quarterback sliding and whatnot. He said, "I've been paid to throw the ball, not run the ball." That to me, when I heard that comment, I was just like, "Okay, we we see what type of guy you are." Like, if you got four, like I was at that Pittsburgh game, mm -hmm. sitting in the front row, corner of the end zone great seats when he threw that pick and it went to joe hayden he had about a couple yards he could have scrambled for when he got outside the pocket and instead he decided to just launch something i just took get four or five yards get six seven yards scramble slide down let's move on to the next play when he made that comment i'm paid to throw the ball not run the ball okay that's just, that's it man that he shows that you're more about yourself than anything Get yeah. the yards for the team. Which, like, that's an odd comment because you see how he interacts with his teammates. Like, his teammates seem to respond pretty well to him for the most part. Like, to me, it, I don't know, it comes across as, like, he's this, uh, like, he's a team guy, but making a comment oh, yeah. that, like, it, do mm -hmm. it, doesn't, it doesn't mesh with what you would think you know, would resonate with the rest of the team. Yeah, I I agree with you. I absolutely agree with you. And that's what threw me off. I heard that. I was kind of like, okay. But then again, he's been one of those type of guys that's made some comments, just some smart alley quick comments to like, I'm going to fire back on the media real quick. And then it's like, eh. then he later comes back, well, I apologize, or I didn't yeah. even say it that way. Eh. 
like you're not in the same position like me firing at the media cool you really can't do that <laughs> you yeah. gotta be a little more mindful of your p's and q's so you know yeah yeah and i mean he doesn't have the he, he doesn't have the resume yet to to be talking all that talking all that shit you know it's like some some guys can go out there and just they can say whatever the hell they want because they've done it you know they've they've been there they've um they've silenced the doubters before like all this and that but like right now i think what you know in in a situation like this what fans want to see is that you learned from some of the stuff and um you're coming at it with like a vengeance this year you know it's like yeah. that's, that's what fans fans want to see the brown the browns got to do something man the cincinnati Bengals, in my mind they didn't really get any better pittsburgh steelers they did nothing in my mind to get better. you got the browns right now situation where they take over that division and just destroy it absolutely just destroy that vision you're looking at probably two wins against Cindy should be a win you know maybe you win one lose one against the uh Pittsburgh Steelers I mean that's Baltimore though like Baltimore is with Lamar but that's the thing though they can split one with Baltimore yeah they, they see it can be whatever how it works the Browns and Baltimore is either always split one of their close games so if yeah. you go split one with Baltimore or let's even say you lose two. You get two out of Cincinnati. You get one. I mean, there's at least three, possibly four wins right there in your division. And that that helps you a long way. If you're looking at four, you know what I mean? Four possible wins right there. You get two against the Steelers. You're looking at five wins in the division. That's, that's a pretty nice way to get yourself onto the playoffs. Yeah. You know, that's also like... I don't think it's a guaranteed win. Uh, like even though since Cincinnati isn't the, they're, they're not in the greatest position right now with Joe, Joe Burrow. Do you think he's, I think he bring some sort of a spark. I do. I think he's going to bring a spark. Problem is his rookie year. He's going up against arguably three top defenses for what was that two, four, for six games. You got six games against three arguably really good defenses with three really great. I mean, Baltimore's defense is always good. Let's just yeah. mind. Their defense is always good. Then you got Miles Garrett back. The Browns have a pretty – Miles Garrett, Oban Joby, uh, Sheldon Richardson, and uh, Vernon Edge. I mean, they have a solid line. Yeah, like you're going up against Aaron. Cincinnati's line is not that great. Let's 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 just be honest here. And then you go up against Pittsburgh. You got Bud Dupree, T.J. Watt. I mean, Minka Fitzpatrick coming off. The, I mean, you're going up against in your rookie year, pretty tough defenses. And I just don't think Cincy. I think will he be good? Yes. This first couple of years, it's going to be a learning curve until Cincy puts the weapons around him to actually help him out. Yeah. Yeah, he could be nasty in a couple of years. Oh, I think. Like because just just from that, just from going up against the defenses, like a guy like Joe Burrow, who seems like you know, like that you look back at his story and it's just like, no, he's he's a winner. He doesn't lose. You know, he's he's a guy that is very very used to winning. But it, you're gonna lose some games. You're mm-hmm. gonna lose some games going to the Bengals in your first year out of college. Like it's just going to happen. So how do you handle that? I think I think he'll handle it well. Mm-hmm. The best thing I think that since he did, and it was a really great move, is keeping AJ Green out for the whole year. Keeping him keeping out. AJ Green, keeping AJ Green out. Okay. There was no there was no point in AJ Green playing, getting hurt, playing for that <laughs> very poor team. Right. I think that's the thing. AJ Green's got pretty much, I mean, he might have gained another two years on his career. You know what I mean? Like, he didn't take hits for a solid year almost. You yeah. Know? Like that, yeah. That helps. And that helps. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's, um, it's going to be an interesting season, man. It's, uh, 
And then, you know, you obviously still got the freaking Chiefs who I don't think are going to slow down. Um, I had no kid. idea Patrick Mahomes was going to be as good as he is. Nobody did. Everybody knew he'd be pretty solid, but nobody knew he would be just, I mean, he makes throws that Aaron Rod, like, if you ask me, he has Tom Brady's mentality about winning, yeah. but he's got the arm of Aaron Rodgers, but then he can scramble like a Lamar Jackson. He's no Lamar Jackson in open field, but he can scramble like Lamar. How do you, like, he's just a mixture of just everything you want in a quarterback and his grit and determination. Like, you can't teach that. No. You can't. No. You cannot teach that winning mentality. He plays so free. Like, he doesn't have – like, I feel like you put him in a different – like, if you put him in a New England situation, I don't think he shows out like he does in Kansas City. New England stunts your that, – that's the thing about New England. You have to respect them, but then you don't like them in a certain way yeah. because no player really gets to shine in New England like what you want to shine because yeah. it's a system. They play team ball. Yeah. 11 men for the ball, hold up the ball, carry, get the rips, get the picks, play good defense, play good zone. They play, in my mind, the Nick Saban. They're, they're the Nick Saban of college football. They, they play a system. You know where that guy's going to be. You know where to throw the ball. You eat the sack. Don't eat the sack. We're running. They, they don't have any egos. They're not, hey, we got this guy hot. He's been hot six games in a row. We're going to feed him the ball, and the defense knows. They're yeah. like, well, your defense sucks at run defense. Guess what we're about to do? And the ball up 40 times this game. It's just like I, I love that mentality. You beat the team where they're the weakest at. Yeah. You find weak link and you attack that. That's what New England does where you get, you know, like the Browns. Baker's going to force a ball to OBJ. Four people want him. He's going to force it to OBJ. I don't give a fuck. It's OBJ. Throw the ball to OBJ. <laughs> no, like, you don't You don't get that with New England. And that's, that's one of the things I'm hoping changes this year. I hope <laughs> they understand how much that they can use OBJ as a um, – uh, as um a distraction. A yeah, dude. I was at me and a buddy went up to um went up to watch the San Francisco game mm-hmm. this past year, and God, that was brutal. But um they they just got the shit kicked out of them, and it was like the first like you could tell how much they were trying to get OBJ involved, and it almost seems mm-hmm. like that takes away from. Everything else is just like, let's just get him involved. And it's like, at what cost, though? Like, if it's not working, you got to switch things up. You got to do something a little bit different. But, it like, that entire game, like, from from the grip, we were just sitting there, like, you know, when they, they, they started out trying to run a reverse or, or put OBJ in, like, the backfield or run a reverse with him throwing the ball. He had somebody wide open but didn't, didn't hit him. And then it, it was just downhill from there. Like it was, it was downhill from the start. Like we were just like, fuck, man. It's trying too hard, man. It, it's yeah. trying way too hard. Like, again, you're going to have times where it's like, all right, OBJ up against Miami. All mm-hmm. right. You know, Jay Howard's going to guard OBJ. That's that, like, that's their top quarterback. That's their top. There it is. All right. We might not go to OBJ this game, but like, let's say they play, you know what I'm saying? They play, who doesn't have a, they play, the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles don't have like shut shut down cornerback. They got a pretty decent D, but it's not a shut down. All right, we might be able to hit them a little more. But like against Miami, all right, like let's maybe go to Landry or run the slide where it was just like, no, nah, we're we're gonna get OBJ the ball. I don't care. But that's the mentality you need a coach that's gotta instill that. Hey, sacrifice guys. We're not going for numbers. We're going for wins. Yes, and that's hey, that's what those guys are about. That's why I like New England system. New England's like I don't give it about your numbers if you get a thousand yards receiving good if you don't get a thousand yards receiving we get a win i don't care right. we got the win like it's not i feel like that's one thing i like belichick in the same way with nick say let's cut these egos let's yeah cut these egos right now like we're here to win games cut the ego yeah yeah got to man you got to 
Um, yeah, so definitely looking forward to to this year. Definitely looking forward to seeing what's going to happen. Um, yeah, I, I'm, last year I feel like I went into the season with, uh, for the first time in a while, with some expectations, and I, I didn't learn from my past. Um, I, I got to go. I think everybody go, did. As my fandom evolves over the years, I got to – I got to go into each season understanding that you still got to play the games, you know, you still got to play the game. So I, I'm going into this season, just, just hopeful, just uh, like, eh, let's see what happens. Let's have some fun. Let's, let's see what you can do. You know, yeah. reality versus paper is a whole lot different, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. On, on paper, we, man, the Browns might've got a couple titles by now. Who knows? Oh my God. <laughs> they have two titles on paper right now, or at least have played in the playoffs every year almost, or close to it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh man. So let's uh, let's switch it up into basketball a little bit. What did you think um, around the time that coronavirus was starting to hit, and Donovan Mitchell uh, tested positive right after? Rudy Gobert did that shit, and then it shut down March Madness. Like, what were you thinking of during that time? So here were my thoughts during basketball, and it's funny to say because I want to laugh so hard because, I mean, for those who don't know, I'm from Akron, Ohio, grew up pretty much. I'm 31, LeBron, what, 34, 35, I want to say. Mm -hmm. I grew up, like, in the LeBron, like, hype of him being in high school, playing sports, the hype of him getting drafted to Cleveland. So I'm a diehard LeBron fan. I've seen everything he's done for Akron, everything. And my thought was, everybody was, hey, he's in the East, he's in the weak East, he's in the weak East. If he came to the West, that'll never happen. He came to the West, goes to the West, and the Lakers are number one seed. <laughs> and I'm just like, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, my pick, after the whole Kobe Bryant situation and all that, my pick going into it was the Lakers are going to make a deep run in the playoffs. And then after that whole Kobe Bryant thing, the Lakers are going to win. It. Like yeah. that was my, like, they are determined. They are playing crazy. Um, getting back to you talking about the whole Rudy Gobert thing. I think that was, <laughs> you want to say it was irresponsible. You know, he was just joking around and everything. And then he tested positive And that's like that. Oh shit! <laughs> like, that's that. Probably shouldn't have been messing with all the stuff, yeah. <laughs> dude. Like, I, I mean, that's all you can say to it, you know. Like that's that. Uh, hey, I'm joking around. I'm joking around, and you're like, I don't know, man. Like I don't even know what you compare. No, he, he wasn't the uh, only one joking around. There's yeah. no fucking way yeah. he was the only one joking around about this shit. A lot of people were joking around at the time. Like the memes haven't stopped. Oh, they're not. They're not gonna stop. I mean, like you, you put yourself in the limelight. Like you heard about the whole Corona stuff, and you're like, ah, it's not real. And then it's like, oh shit, I really do got it. Uh, like, who knows? Donovan Mitchell could have gave it to Rudy Gobert, right? We don't even know the actual case, or like the athletic trainer could have gave it to Rudy Gobert. Like we don't even know how it, like the trail of how it actually went down and happened. But it's just. That's just one of them, like, all you could just say is, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, that's yeah. it. Like, come up with excuse. Don't come up with answers. Just take your L. Keep Here's it moving. Like, like, they ask you to like, donate to something. Like, please don't hate <laughs> me forever. Like, <laughs> you need to donate. Like, you need to go and create 35,000 test kits. And just, hey, I made these by <laughs> hand. I'm donating these. This, this is for me messing up. This is for me messing up. Yeah. Like, that's really all you can say. Man, yeah, I knew that this shit was um, very, very real uh, when they started shutting everything down. Like, cause you know, the uh, like when when the March Madness shut down, I'm like, oh shit's about to get interesting because they don't give a fuck about their athletes. Like, they don't give a fuck about college athletes. And for them to shut down, you know, it's only because of pressure. And you know what they were trying to do. They were trying to play in empty stadiums. They're like, listen, we're not going to let any fans in. We're, they're just going to play the game so we can get the TV ratings and televised. And it's just like, 
when they when they shut the Arnold down here in Columbus, Ohio, that's when I knew like, all right, this is real. Yeah. They're trying to make this real thing. But what got me, and I laugh about it now, is everything's starting to open back up because they're so worried about the economy and all that. But two months later, we still have no cure. We still have nothing. So it's like, what did we shut stuff down for? <laughs> like. Oh man, that's a whole separate discussion. Back to the NBA. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a whole separate discussion. Boom. But back to the we'll, NBA, man. We'll put, that, we'll put that on the back burner for a little bit. But yeah. Oh my <laughs> God. Yeah, but back back to the NBA. Yeah, I I definitely agree with you on that because dude, the oh my god, the the shit with Kobe. Like that talk about the first one of the first things that was was putting the world on pause we've had multiple things this year that have put the world on pause and the world not just like little areas like kobe that dude had reach like worldwide reach and that like the way it oh my like when i first saw the story i'm i'm one I'm assuming like you might have had a similar thing, but when you first saw the reaction, like when you first saw that it actually happened, I, I was just like, no fucking way, no. Nah. Like who, <laughs> yeah. who's the jackass that made this shit up? That's what I thought when I first heard it. I was just like, Kobe, yeah, like eh, yeah, right, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, like no, he really is dead. And I'm just like, oh wow, like I don't know. You don't think that, you know, like the people you see. And in a way, like, I'm not saying he was, like, one of my sports idols, but, like, you idolize everybody's co- yelling Kobe on the court, stuff like that, you know, uh, like, wearing Kobe's shoes, like, it just kind of like, dang, like, like, you looked up to him for his mentality, his grit, the way he wanted to win, his determination, his effort, everything, you're just like, all right, like, in sports, if you didn't look up to him as an athlete, did you really want to win and did you really want to be better? So like it, it it definitely hit a nerve with everybody. I feel like it's that it, it 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 shined a light on a lot of stuff. I feel like just for sure. Like you gotta live every day. You gotta live every moment, man. You never know what's gonna happen. Like literally, you never know what's gonna happen. Yeah, man, for real. And you know, I've had a different appreciation for Kobe since that because growing up in Ohio, uh, I didn't really follow you know, the, the Lakers that much, mm-hmm. um, you know, it wasn't it, like, I remember them winning, winning titles, like with him and Shaq and everything, but it was, it was one of those like bitter sports, Ohio moments where I'm just like, yeah. you know, like, Oh man, like they're winning them all. Like I did not, I did not understand what was going into that type of stuff. You know, it's oh. at, at the age that I was where I, how I was growing up, the sports that I was playing, the coaches I had around me, like nobody talked like that. And like, nobody had that type of like Mamba mentality. So that was foreign to me. That would, that was something that I didn't appreciate until now. Like I, since, since that's happened, everybody's sharing what they've shared, watching all the last second shots that he would take, you know, knowing that like, he's going to come out there, he's going to tell you what he's going to do and he's going to do it. And it's just crazy, fuck, man, a grown ass adult who is a professional athlete that stands out amongst professional athletes. Like, Mm -hmm. it's hard to do, man. It's hard. In a world full of followers, it's hard to be that leader. And that's what he was. Like, he just didn't care. He was that leader. The one thing that I'm looking forward to specifically is when they do like how they do with everybody, the Jordan, the last dance, when they do like a 30 for 30 on Kobe Bryant. Yeah. I feel like I, what time is it? I'll make time to watch it. <laughs> I feel like it's going to be, it's going to be crazy. Like all the quotes that he did, the stuff he would tell people and say like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. He was on it, man. Like he had that it factor and it was, um, man. Yeah, he's uh it was a it was a low moment and I I I feel like it's something that it's it, we've been having too many of these world stopped moments this year. <laughs> Already I think 
We need to understand that we're all, we, we got a lot more in common than what we might have thought. Like we're all feeling some shit. I agree, man. 2020 has been a year where if as a person you can't actually sit here and reflect on certain stuff that has happened this year, I don't like this in my mind mentally, this makes you prioritize stuff like this year's made you prioritize money. This year's made you prioritize loved ones a little bit. This one's made you prioritize the people that you're idling. It made you, in my mind, at least for me, it made me rethink a little bit because it's, I mean, from January until now, yeah. look how much has happened. You've had Corona, you've had uh, stock market hits, you've had financial hits, you've had issues with politicals, government election, you've had deaths of people. Um, uh, killings, Black, Black Lives Matter, all that other stuff, resurfacing, coming back up, racial segregation with the presidency and all this. Like, it's been so much stuff that's happened, and this is just now. And I mean, like, we're not even halfway through the year yet. Like, we haven't even hit the halfway point. <laughs> what? We haven't even hit the halfway point. And in your head, you're just like, oh, like, it's yeah. been a rough ass year. Like, <laughs> it's like we're perpetually stuck on, like, Friday after a long week without a weekend. Like, this shit has been exhausting. I was telling my friend, I was sitting there laughing. I'm like, man, I feel like this is the Friday movie. Like, we had Friday, <laughs> next Friday, Friday after next. What, what the fuck is the sequel about to be right now? Like, <laughs> this shit is crazy. Like, Debo is never going away. That's what I feel like right now. <laughs> Debo is just taking different forms. Oh, yeah, dude, he's taking different forms, showing up every corner. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, do you think the um, – because I, I keep seeing that they're, like, hopeful that the NBA is going to be back and all this and that. And I'm hopeful that you can do sports again. I mean, the, the UFC – I'm a big MMA fan, so I don't know if you've been catching any of the fights recently, but, um, you know, they're – they're showing a blueprint for what can be done. Um, but at the same time, like this is something else that I was wondering about too. Say you get like back into the swing of things, you get into the playoffs and it's a pivotal game and LeBron tests positive. What the fuck do you do now? Like it's not, it, that is not like it's an injury that it's like, oh yeah, like he he blew out his ankle or something that that is going to take him out. It's just like, no, like you could your team might get taken out because somebody randomly tests positive. The way the way I see it right now is it's gonna work one of two ways in sports. And this is just the economy in general. They're either going to have a doggy dogs world type mentality where it's like, all right, look, we're opening this back up and we're not shutting it back down again. Yeah. You test positive. This is what we got to do. Or for somebody like LeBron, they're going to lie. About it. Like, let's, <laughs> let's just be honest. <laughs> all real like, like, like LeBron, LeBron test positive. No, it. LeBron did not. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That, that's, uh, the, 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 that was, uh, who's somebody off the bench? That's uh, Alex Caruso. That's his test. Like, <laughs> Oh, he, no, LeBron tested positive for greatness. It wasn't the coronavirus. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it wasn't coronavirus. He tested positive for dropping 30 tonight. Like, that, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. happening. It's, it's not, like, you'll never hear that. Or what they're going to do is this stuff's just going to spark back up, and by next month, this time, they're going to have to shut it all down. I mean, if this is as real as they're saying it is, we are not prepared yet to open everything back up. But if if it's not as ah well we can kind of live through it whatnot they're gonna just open everything back up and by in my mind i say it by august it's gonna be business as you like let's just keep it moving like business as you come all of this but i think once they open back up sports the nba ncaa because now we're getting towards the time you know spring ball all that stuff's gonna be you know populating and coming back up once they open it back up, it's open. I don't think they're going to open it back up to shut it back down because the yep. revenue lost is insane. Columbus lost so much money from the Arnold Cup. Oh, and, yeah. I mean, like, one of the hugest sporting events. Yeah. 
once they open it back up, I feel it's going to stay. I do. Yeah, I think you have to make that, like, and I think that's why it's such a big decision because I don't think you can do this, like, one foot in, one foot out thing when it comes to, to sporting events and shit like this. It's like, no, we got to make a decision and stick with it and just live with the outcome because you can't just keep, like, yeah. you can't just keep opening shit up and shutting it down. And, like, that's no way to live. Like, we can't, like, yeah, you're We're right. not able to do that and the damage at this point i feel like from um just mindset around people and human beings is is already been done um like even when we do go back to whatever it is whatever you want to call normal um i i don't know man i don't know what it's gonna look like i I think we're going to see a change when it comes to sports, the sports, like the athlete fan interaction. I don't think it's going to be the same anymore. I don't think you're going to be seeing athletes going by and like high fiving people as they leave, you know, because then it's like, Oh my God, you can get it. So it's going to be like, it's, it's going to, it's going to change sports right, right there. Uh, And I know it might seem like a little change, but that's just going to be one of many that we're going to have to see how it plays out. That takes away from it. I mean, you think that they have the whole meet and greets and all that stuff. Like, yeah. as a kid, like, it was cool to go to a game. And if you're there with, like, school or there with this organization, like, oh, we're going to get to meet X, Y, Z. And now that's probably not going to happen. Like, those are some interactions that change kids' life, you know? Like, yeah, push kids to be better in sports or whatnot. There's pictures of, like, Chris Paul and Dwayne Wade and all those guys that – Jordan camps and stuff like that that like you're you might you may not have that stuff now so yeah, like is that gonna happen is if it does happen is it gonna look different are we gonna have to test all these like are we gonna have to test everybody right before it ha- like and then before in the middle after like come on man like yeah it's uh it's making people uh, you know it's doing a couple of things. It's not all bad because it's making people think for a second about how they're coming across in the world. And I think, I think that needs to be addressed 100%. Like, I think we all need to be more aware of how we're showing up about how, um, you know, the things that we're doing might be impacting other people. But at the same time, if we're second guessing human interaction and being able to be comfortable around like fellow human beings, that's uh, that's gonna make shit weird, man. Scary, scary man. It's scary to think that what the actual outcome of this may be. Yeah, it's there is no end all be all. Like right now, I'm I live across the street from a Mexican spot, and I'm just looking at all these people who are standing outside waiting to go into a restaurant to sit down and eat outside. And in my head, I'm just like this is insane like that's all you can honestly think man like this is crazy going to the store and there's like a line with like little sections taped off where yeah like oh this is this is the shittiest amusement park ever i gotta wait in line to (laughs) spend money on my (laughs) gotta wait in line to buy toilet paper like this is insane (laughs) i didn't sign up for this game yeah, I did not sign up for this. Like, can we reset and go back to the beginning and try this game all over again? Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, go back to 2019. Like, what do we need to do differently? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> go back to 2019 and re- we'll start at about October and we're going to redo all this shit over again. Right, right. Oh, my God. But, man, if they do, if they do bring it back, do you think um, – do you think they'd go straight into playoffs or do you think they'd have to play a couple, like a play in bracket or something like that? Because it was, it was getting towards the end of the season anyways, where it was like, we were starting to see the playoff picture kind of shape, but at the same time, you know, there's a couple teams here and there that, um, that are going to have an argument like, Hey, we needed the rest of the season to see if we were going to get a spot or not. I feel like they'll probably take, let's say the top six, if there's a clear top six, and with the final two spots, they might do a little round robin or like little bracket style playoff, get those 
seven and eight in there and then let's run it from there. Yeah. But I mean, it, there's no way you can replace the games that have been missed and the potential. Like, and this is hypothetically saying, what if in game, there's 82 games, what if in game 74, LeBron tweaks or breaks his ankle? Mm-hmm. What if in game 80 to get secure as number two or number three spot, Paul George goes out? You know, like, what if Joel E just actually gets completely injured? Like, you know, like, you can't, you can't replace those scenarios. So you got to, I feel like at a certain point, you got to make a cutting point. All right, these were the teams that were for sure going to be in. Like, looking at the rest of the season, even if you take wins, losses, X, Y, Z, calculate your formula, they're in. These are the bubble teams. Let's add them play in and let's call it from there. But there's so many ways they could do it that you never know. You know, yeah, man, and something. I really hope this. I I hope it happens. I hope we get to see a playoffs. Uh, the playoffs this year, like I think they would have been sick. You know, I love the way that the and like the NBA seems more balanced. I know you have like a couple a couple teams that are obviously going to be standing out, but it it seems like it's a little more balanced than it has been in past years. But I think giving all these teams with high level athletes all this time to rest recover like we're going like we have the potential to see beginning of the season energy in the playoffs like it's it has the potential to just be insane with the amount of energy I I better see some hard games. I better see hard fouls. I better see everybody playing every minute going bucking. I'm not trying to hear anything about resting games, taking time off. You all had two months. I better not. Oh, dude, when it comes to that in the NBA, and that's one thing that upsets me so much, is they're talking about the whole resting and playing and not like, listen, I'm not trying to hear none of that, all right? It is go time. Like, you've had enough rest. All you, you've had rest. You ain't played a full 82 game seat. Let's let's make it happen. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Yeah, it's uh, it has the it has the potential to be really awesome. I think it's gonna be, man, it's gonna suck if uh, that doesn't happen because I I agree with you. I think like looking at the the way that the season was playing out and everything that had happened. Dude, the Lake Show was looking primed and ready to just to take it. They were looking primed to do something, my man. Like it was, it, it's it's about time, man. I mean, it's been a while since the Lakers have won one, and I really feel like with everything they got going on right now, it's. I think LeBron and AD were gonna make it happen. Yeah, yeah, I do too. Yeah, and I mean, with that, with that duo, God, like. Everybody that was wondering if the Lakers gave up too much to get AD, it's like, uh, no, I think they, I think they were good. I think they did a good job. Not even close in my mind. I don't feel like it was close. I feel like they probably could have gave up some more to make it happen. To be honest with you, <laughs> yeah. and they would have probably done it again, over again, not even thinking twice about it. You know what I mean? Dude, they got such a stacked team, too. I mean, Dwight Howard, with the different mindset that he's bringing at this point in his career, he gets to be a role player, and he's embracing it. The fact that he accepted it, that's the biggest thing. He it's had true. to accept it. It's, it's every, you know. Had to accept it. He accepted it, and I feel like that's been the best thing for him, is he accepted what his actual role was, and now. I mean, they're killing it, man. They're making it happen. And, you know, I feel like that has been a different, like watching this whole Last Dance uh, documentary compared with what the game looks like today, I feel like that's a a major difference in, in basketball is that you have, you have so much attention and so much focus on um, – the star players nowadays and you have so many star players on so many different teams that are getting a lot of um a lot of attention a lot of press and it's like back in the day there was a few 
And nowadays it's a lot and not everybody can be a Jordan. And you, you see this last dance thing and you're like, everybody's like, Oh, Scotty was the number two player in the league. And it's like, what? Okay. Like the consensus number two player is with the number one player. One player. Yeah. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I don't know that I understood that back in the day, you know, like I knew Scotty was good. I know he was a beast and everything like that, but know how good for everybody to say like the number, like this is something to think about with this. It's like the number two player in the league took a role. Like he took a role to the number one, like that's some it's shit. That to made, think about. It, it, it made it's that insane work. to actually think about. Yeah, it's, it's like insane. you can sit there and think about that. And uh, you know, for that to happen the way it did, for Jordan to be Jordan, you know, he had the number two, the consensus number two player in the in the country. You know, as as a guy that wasn't ruffling a lot of feathers. That's not happening these days. No, not so, at all. I mean, I mean, if you, kind of if you look at it, and LeBron uh, potentially, but. It's not compared to what Jordan had. I mean, everybody gives Jordan a credit and the props for making the run that he did, the teams that he had, you know, they say. But, like, Pippen gets so underrated. And the fact that they had Dennis Rodman, and Rodman was the top rebounder in the league for almost six years in a row. I mean, that's – they had a pretty – they had a big three, whether they wanted that – people want to admit it or not. And they still had two coach. Yeah, Kukoc was like Kukoc was underrated, and, and Pat Kukoc originally never misses yeah. a clutch shot. Yeah, Kukoc was originally was supposed to be originally Jordan and Kukoc were supposed to be the like focal points in the features of it. So then they add Pippen onto it, and it's like, come on, man! Like they they had a very stacked team. Like they had a very yeah. And you know, you bring up a good point about the big three, and I think that's that's like something that you know, we think didn't exist back in the day. Like the, and it's like, "Mm, yeah, it definitely did. It just wasn't called that then. Mm -hmm. I think it, Mm -hmm. I, well, okay. Yeah. It's like kind of going back to what I was talking about with the star players on teams nowadays. It's, it's like, there's so many star players nowadays that the, the big threes can happen a lot more frequently because there's a lot more quote unquote star players in the league. I feel like the difference now is that you're right. It was more spread out back then, but they they wanted more competition where I do feel like players nowadays are looking more for the easier way to get a championship. Players are more like, Hey, you go here, I'll go here. You hear you. Like, I feel like there's a little bit more colluding and see a little bit more of people running to want to play with everybody else. Where I do feel like back in the day, there was competition spread out a little bit more like the big threes and stuff. They got drafted. Those people became free agents where now it people demanding trades and yeah, it it's a more convoluted now. And I feel like those people now, the, the competition just isn't the same. Like that competitive mentality isn't the same back in the day as it is now. Like somebody like Damian Lillard, I respect him more than anybody in the league. Like respect him the most. He's like, look, I ain't going from Portland. This is where I'm at. If you want to come play with me, cool. If not, I like he's staying true to Portland, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I get it. You know, and I, I you can definitely, definitely respect that. Um and you know, going back to the the last dance, it's um what I do appreciate about that, uh, seeing seeing it the way that they're doing it, is realizing how hard Jordan did work when he was getting, you know, when he was getting beat up, like when the, you know, the foul, some of the some of the calls that get called today didn't get called back then, and that that mm-hmm. is a, that is a just a reality. Like the game was different. The, you know, it's. There's a lot of differences and, um, you know, his grit, his mentality and his like, oh, no, like you want to beat me up? No, I'm going to put on some muscle and beat you up type thing. Like yeah. that is impressive. 
it's so impressive to see that that type of uh mindset and it's also it also makes you think man because you know the the commercials back in the day of uh i want to be like mike you know it's it's yeah. just like yeah. do do we really like how many people actually want to be like mike because i'm seeing the documentary and while i have respect for him and admiration for what he did and just being like damn that motherfucker did it you know like and he did it like the way he yeah. did it and it's pretty amazing but at what i agree i agree and i mean like he I mean, he sacrificed everything i mean mm-hmm. yeah you can't fault him for that but like i said just that determination that grit that we don't have that today in today's sports i don't it, it's very far few in between you know that's the way i feel like it is do you think uh, do you really not think we have that in today's sports with some of the athletes that are out there with some of them no because so the way i look at it is back in the day like do we have that same like determination do we have that same like people want to win yes but not as bad as what it was because the biggest thing now is everything's about money, 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 money. These contracts are bigger. People are trying to sign the biggest contract, get paid the most. It, it, you don't have that same, in my mind, I just say that same mentality. I always look at the NFL and I look at players that catch rocks and run around real quick sometimes. Some players catch a ball and they'll start falling down. Like they don't want to take a hit at all. Because they're trying to play as long as they can. They're trying to save their body as much. NBA, you don't really get as much around the rim. It's a three-point game. You know what I mean? If you touch a three-point shooter, they're, they're calling fouls automatically. Like, you, like, prime example, I look at James Harden. In my mind, James Harden would not survive back in the day. Because you can't do all – you know what I'm like? James Harden takes 23s a game. You're yeah. not surviving the day man look at the shot selection i understand the game has evolved it really has but there's not even really like a true big man in the game anymore. that is true yeah the the days of the the big man are gone you know and then everybody's trying to sign a super max deal that that's the new wave now get the super max deal super max deal but i think, you can't blame it you know i, I don't think- blame it I was going to say the same thing. I think it's a result of people recognizing that the league, um, they're out for themselves. And mm-hmm. they don't, it's a business. You know, go, it is a business. And I, you know, I think that is why sports has changed is because, you know, you see back in the day when the only way that we could know about sports was TV and newspaper. And, and that was that was pretty much it. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't think people understood the ins and outs of the business, but now with all these documentaries that are coming out, the behind the scenes footage and all this shit that we got going on today with social media and athletes sharing their lives with everybody, um, more and more people are understanding how shady the business is. And it's, and it's like, I don't blame the athletes for getting theirs because, if you are going to be in a place where you're getting paid off of your skill and your ability to draw a crowd and you're not getting compensated based off of that because the team that you play for is being shady as hell or they don't want to promote you in a certain way, then what, what else are you going to do? What else are you going to do? Are you going to sit around and just stew and, you know, and just not set yourself up for the future? I think that's another thing that people don't think about is like, you have a very, very limited amount of time that you get to be a professional athlete for the most part. And it's True. like, you got to get yours. If, if, um, if you want to, to be financially stable, like for the rest of your life, like you can do that. And sure. I don't blame you. Absolutely you for that. I don't. I don't blame them, but I think that does take away from some of the competitiveness. Stuff I think it does too. Sport. And I think it's yeah, going to happen in the NCAA that. too when they when they allow people's uh, people to get um, pay them for likeness. Yep. 
Yep. It's it's gonna change it's gonna change college sports for sure. It is. And like we were talking about, I don't think it's for the best, man. I think it's gonna you're gonna have those those one star, two star players that are gonna get overlooked who then turn around and end up having a great career because yeah. you're trying to get the big name to come in. Well, and I also think you're gonna get a little bit less from some of the five star people that are focusing more on getting paid than they are on their craft. So you might see some like one and two star players in the grand scheme of things that surpass the five star player because they're the ones that are working. They're the ones that are putting in a little bit more effort than the five star athlete that's getting a bonus because he's at a club at a VIP on campus. Like, mm-hmm. you know, pay ten dollars to get into the club and get to meet such and such. Like, this is some shit that's going to change college sports. Oh, yeah. it's, it, you're about to see the whole college landscape change. And it's it's, it's going to be odd, ah, man. Big. Oh, shit. Man, is there any uh, anything else that you want to get into on this one from a, from a sports standpoint, sports perspective, where we're going? Man, from a sports standpoint, man, it's just mainly just get back into it. And that's yeah. what we're looking at. It's, it sucks not being able to see anything. I'm, I'm done watching all these old clips from 2001 of basketball and stuff on ESPN. <laughs> I'm just ready to get back into it. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy because more people are being exposed to MMA now. And, uh, you know, this is something I've been following for a long ass time, but I'm like, yes, like, let's watch it. Let's watch more of this too. Dana White's an interesting man. That's really all you can say. <laughs> Interesting is a good way to put it. <laughs> That's all you can say. Oh, shit, man. Well, thank you, Tim, for uh, taking some time out today, man. And uh, I'm glad we were able to catch up. Like, I was I was hoping that we were going to be able to do this one this year, and it, time has just been kind of flying by. So I'm glad we were able to touch base. I'll be looking forward to it next time. Hopefully there will be uh, some actual football to talk about, some, like, real live football to talk about. I know, right? <laughs> All right, people. Hope you enjoyed it. We are out of here. See ya.